Hey there, and welcome to A Very Nigerian Crime. The internet, a place we all know too well, has bridged the world and made it one big global village. But there have been some downsides as well. Fair and proper usage is advised. This brings us to the tragic story of Cynthia, a 24-year-old woman who was stalked and lured under false claims of business and then drugged, tied up, beaten, and finally strangled to death. To kill was to be doomed. To kill was to die yourself. Kelly Braffett This story began with his friend request, and as we all know, it wasn't a well-intentioned one. Cynthia was born on the 10th of November 1987 in Abo, Delta State. She was the last child and only daughter of retired Major General Frank Okogusu and Joy Rita Nkem. She had three elder brothers who all loved and doted on her. She was described as a hardworking and ambitious woman, and it was normal for her after attaining a BSc certificate in English language from Nasaroa State University to proceed with a master's program while still running a fashion boutique. Cynthia's life was just coming together when tragedy struck. She, just like her peers, spent quite a bit of time online, and it was on Facebook she met Echizona Nwa before. What started out as an interesting friendship grew, and in a few months' time, Cynthia friended his cousin, Ezike Ilechuku Olisa Ulokwa. Cynthia was truly a spectacle, and despite her young age and family background, Cynthia strived for more. She owned a boutique and was a retailer of clothing. Her main source of stock was from a relative living out of the country, and just like every other business-minded individual, Cynthia looked for more sources of unique items at better prices to add to her stock. Unbeknownst to Cynthia, nothing about her acquaintance with Uma before and Oliver was coincidental. She had been stalked all over the internet, and her attackers knew quite a bit about her. When Uma before approached Cynthia online, he claimed he was a student of a Lagos State University and was also in a similar line of business. He spent quite a while trying to gain her trust, and over time, she believed him. When the offer for a plug to acquire good clothing at affordable prices was offered, Cynthia was thrilled. Mwa before also offered to host her and got her a plane ticket and also promised to handle her accommodation expenses, all just so she could meet his business associates. Cynthia was quite prudent in her dealings, especially with money. She didn't have an ATM for reasons unknown. Perhaps it was to be conservative in spending, but she used a checkbook to handle transaction and as per her regular mode of operation, she ended up traveling to Lagos State with just three phones, some loose cash, her checkbook, and no ATM. Upon arriving in Lagos, Cynthia was picked up from Muratala Mohammed Airport in a catcher by Umwa before and Ulisa, and was driven to Kosmila Hotel in Lakeview Estate, Festec Town. Upon arriving and settling down, she was offered a drink, Ribina. This drink had been spiked beforehand with Rohypnol, which is a similar drug to Valium and also known as a tranquilizer, a recommended treatment for short-term insomnia. However, the drug didn't have the instant effect they anticipated it would have on her. And at this point, they had since long lost patience. They beat up Cynthia, demanding she handed over all the money she had access to. Sadly, Cynthia couldn't oblige because even if she wanted to, she dealt with cash book and that wasn't a good option for her attackers who were arrogant enough to assume that it would successfully elude the police. After several attempts to get Cynthia to give them money, the duo became enraged. Cynthia was helpless. She had no ATM or mobile application as per her design and this attempt at being pennywise would end up causing her to lose her life. Mwa before and Onisa were outraged. The time and resources spent on luring Cynthia would be wasted and she was considered a bad investment. This would result in Cynthia being beaten, tied up, robbed, raped and then finally strangled to death. The deal parted with Cynthia's money, three Blackberry phones, her jewelries, her international passport and her driver's license. 
after the Hinyo's act was complete. The two spent the night with Cynthia's lifeless body. And the next morning, Mwabufu was reported to say he wanted to use the ATM and he would be back before checkout time, allowing them to leave Cynthia's body in the hotel room and enough time to make a clean break. At 3 p.m. of the same day, a call was made to the hotel. The caller claimed to be an occupant of the room. He notified the hotel receptionist, Miss Niebo, that he wouldn't be returning and that she should remove, and I quote, the body of that bastard, unquote, out of the room before ending the call. The receptionist notified the manager of the matter on ground, and they tried calling the room severally and got no response before using the master key to finally gain entry. Cynthia's body was found bound, her two hands restricted behind her back with a brown tape and padlock chains. Her legs were bound together without any clothing. Her mouth was stuffed with a hairnet and a handkerchief. The medical examiner revealed that Cynthia had suffered pulmonary oedema, a condition caused by excess fluid in the lungs with each of her lungs weighing two times that of a normal person. The final autopsy stated that Cynthia died from asphyxiation. That is, she was suffocated to death due to blockage of air into her lungs. She also had multiple bite wounds, bruises and some aberrations, revealing signs of struggle. Doses of rohypnol was also found in the system, but not enough to have been the cause of her death. The hotel notified authorities of the murder, and due to Cynthia's identification being stolen, her identity wasn't immediately known and her body was kept in a morgue. On the other hand, Cynthia's family were awaiting the safe return of their daughter, completely unaware of the terror Cynthia had gone through. Some days passed and she wasn't picking her calls, and on the seventh day, Cynthia's mother was able to speak to her daughter's attackers over the phone. Cynthia's attackers picked up her phone and notified her mother that Cynthia was ill, and soon after they started asking for a ransom. Cynthia's mother is quoted to have said in an interview with CNN and a quote, I asked them if they killed my daughter, and they said no. She was just sick and couldn't come to the phone. Unquote. It took the police three weeks to finally make an arrest after using footages of CCTV camera from the hotel to identify Cynthia's attackers and the cell phone records to get locations. The trial for Cynthia started on the 27th of August in 2012 at the Yaba Magistrate High Court. In the early stages of the case, Approximately one month after Cynthia was laid to rest, the police had arrested four people involved in her mother. They were Olisa Eloka Ezike, Okunu Mwabufo, the Facebook friends. There was also Osita Oji, the pharmacist who sold the Rohypno, and Nonso Ejike, Olisa's brother, for fencing Cynthia's stolen item. A six count charge of conspiracy murder, armed robbery, rape and unlawful administration of obnoxious substance and forceful administration of obnoxious substance with intent to cause bodily harm were read to them. Olisa and Umwa before were charged with conspiracy to commit murder and felony. Oji Osita, the pharmacist, with negligence and sales of drug without prescription. And Nonso Ejike was charged with the possession of stolen item. All the parties initially pleaded not guilty. And after 10 witnesses and 17 exhibits, the judge stated that the case from the state was, and I quote, congent, complete, unequivocal, and compelling, unquote. Orji and Nonso were granted bail with two shorties, while Olisa, Eloka, and Umwa before were arrested without bail and kept at Kirikiri Prison in Lagos State. After four years and seven months, a verdict was reached. The George Olabisi Akinladi made a statement, and I quote, Justice is not only for the victim, but for the society at large. The law says anyone found guilty of committing murder shall be sentenced to death. This court is not in a position to change the provision of the law, unquote. And on the 23rd of March, 2017, the judge found the two guilty on three other counts and sentenced them to a total of 20 years of imprisonment each and also ultimately sentenced to death by hanging. The judge acquitted and discharged Oji Osita and Nonso Ejike. 
Cynthia was 24 years old at the time of her death. She had her whole life ahead of her and was off to a good start. She was the only daughter and last child of retired Major General Frank Osogugo and Joy Rita Nkem. She was the only sister of three elder brothers. She was beautiful, hardworking and industrious. Her death was a huge loss to her family and a society at large. Her death has served as a reminder to the hidden dangers of the internet. May her beautiful soul rest in perfect peace and her family gain strength to heal from this loss. Thank you. For more content like this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Remember, stay safe and stay blessed.